Settings can be a deciding factor in winning games, and the best settings are what you need to help you win sometimes. Some of these are going to be preference based where the others are mandatory to help you win. The first settings tab we're going to be covering is the video tab. Now for your display mode, this is the first preference one. I play with borderless windows, but it's your choice. FOV and aspect ratio are preference based as well. Just do what fits your screen. Now, dynamics render scale you want off. Having it on may cause some problems, so it's best to keep it off. For your render scale, again, it's a preference, but keep it on your screen. Don't go too big or too small. For your frame rate, it really depends on your monitor's refresh rate. Typically, you want to go above the refresh rate. An example of this is if your monitor is 144 hertz, go to about 200 hertz. Now, you might be thinking, why not just max out the frames? There isn't that much of a need to, as if your frame rate is too high, it can cause input lag. So keep it above the refresh rate, but not too high. VSync and triple buffering you want off. It just helps contribute to a smoother frame rate and experience. Reducing buffering oh, you want on as well, for the same reason as before. If you have a good graphics card, do NVIDIA Reflex enabled plus boost. Otherwise, just have it enabled. For graphics quality, it is also preference. I have most of mine on low or high, however, if you want a smoother or higher frame rate, it's best to have them on low or off, except shadows, which you want to have on, as it can help you see the enemy team's shadows revealing their location. For details, it's all preference. You don't need to have any of the stats on, but if you want to have them on, the best ones to have on are latency and frame rate, so you know if you're getting a lag spike or frame drops. All the sound settings are mandatory. Have sound on. You gain so much valuable information just by listening to sounds that you won't know if you have no sound on. It is preference though how loud or quiet you want the volume to be, but just have it on. I would also recommend having auto join team voice on, as communication is very important. Now for the best settings, the control settings. Most of the settings other than the ones in the general tab are irrelevant to actually playing the game, so I will skip over them, but the very first setting is sensitivity. This is very preference based. There is no right or wrong sensitivity, but for PC players, you either want an extremely low sensitivity like 1 and a high DPI like 16. 100, 3200, or a low DPI like 400 or 800, and a high sensitivity. Never want to go past 10 on sensitivity for PC though. For console, as there is no DPI, you want a really high sensitivity. Again, it is preference, but when I played on console, my sensitivity was 80. For a reticle or crosshair, however, you like to call it, I know you want to try out the new reticles just don't. Having a smaller crosshair is usually better as it takes up less of your screen and shows you where you you need to be aiming. For keybinds, just go with the diff default ones. Unless you don't like where certain keys are, you should change them, but otherwise don't change it too much. If you were to change some, make sure they're very easy to click. Don't go putting your alt key as O. For your HUD settings, have the obvious ones turned on, like the kill feed. If you want, you can turn on the sound when your team gets an elimination or when a teammate dies. If you tend to not pay attention to the kill feed, this setting's very good. However, if you're constantly checking the kill feed or just observant, it's best to have it off as audio clutter can get annoying sometimes. Make sure you have the always skip kill cam turned off though. Believe it or not, when it shows the kill cam of how you died, it shows how much alt charge the person who killed you has. So you gain a monstrous amount of value for watching the kill cam, as you know whether or not they have alt, and if they don't, how close they are to it. The rest of the HUD, HUD settings are up to preference. For accessibility settings, in general, you want camera shake and HUD off and reduced respectively. As the less your screen shakes the easier it is to hit shots and turn your reduce menu off. For a cursor size, go with the default one, unless you have trouble seeing it, in which you should increase the size until you can see it. For subtitles, if you are in a noisy place, 
or if you have to constantly talk to other people, I would recommend turning subtitles on as it tells you what the sounds are happening, but as a subtitle. Otherwise, if you're in a separate room or a quiet place, just have them off as they can be distracting. For colorblindness, don't have them on unless you're actually colorblind. I think it was Jane who said that if they have colorblind settings on, unless they are actually colorblind, they most likely plot. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. Stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you all in the next video.